Hey guys, Blair with Revit Auto, and on this episode of Tool Tuesday, I'm gonna be talking about my Maxisys Scan Tool. Now this unit is equipped with a J-Box, and what that allows me to do is to use my laptop to go ahead and program the radio in this 2014 Equinox. So what's really great about this is that we were able to use a used radio out of the junkyard, and with this right here in my laptop, I get to go ahead and reprogram it. So to get started, you'll just wanna go ahead and hook up your J-Box to the OBD2 port, and then you'll hook up your USB adapter, and then you'll hook up your laptop. Once you have all that hooked up in, you can go ahead and jump in the car. So the first thing to do is go to acdelcotds.com, and you'll have to create your own account. I already have, so I'm just gonna log into my account. That is a lie, that is a lie, so I'm gonna re-enter my password, don't look. This is just the terms and condition agreement. You know how it goes, you just sign your life away. Once you're in here, what you'll wanna go ahead and do is go to your orders and uh, you can see all your past orders here, but we're gonna go to subscriptions and programming and we're gonna need to add one more because we are out of them. So it's 40 bucks a car. Now when you go through checkout, it tells you, you know, it's not refundable, it's tied to that bin and then you just go ahead and pay. So all my billing information's over here. So after you've paid, it brings you back to your home page here and you'll just go ahead and click view. It'll tell you add bin and uh, this will launch your uh, SPS system your TIS, SPS. And what we'll go ahead and do is we'll launch our service programming system. Now we're using mobile data here, so it's a little slow and a little laggy, but you typically wanna have your Java all the way updated or else you can run into issues. So I'll go ahead and just click run. And if I give it a couple seconds, it will launch for me. Now, as you can see here, it's telling me that there's a later version, but I'm just going to skip this for right now. So I have a photo of the VIN number in my left hand on my phone. Uh, I've already checked the windshield to make sure that both VIN numbers match. And this vehicle came in with a bad head unit. Uh, so that's why we're doing this here today. So I'm using a J2534, and this is replacing and programming an ECU. So I'm gonna click next. And the ignition is off, the battery is fully charged. And now I'm going to go to the next step because we already have our PC hooked up, our J box hooked up, and the vehicle is powered. So I'll turn the key to the on position. We'll go ahead and click Chevrolet because this is a Chevy. And this is a 2014 Equinox. So we'll just come down here to 2014. And this is a uh, SUV. So it's gonna be underneath the uh, truck MPV incomplete. This is our Equinox. And if we're lucky, well, we're using this, so we know that. So let me just click continue here. This is just saying which one we're using uh, for our J-Box programming device. Just looking at the VIN on the car and the VIN that we have here, we have good communication. Sometimes you have to manually enter this in, but because the BCM and PCM have not been replaced, we're actually good here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click next. Right now here, the issue that we're having is that the radio has been replaced. So we're gonna have to do uh, an immobilizer relearn to get rid of the theft deterrent. We've got a little radio piece here too. USB file transfer and programming. And uh, we'll just go ahead and program that thing in. All right, so really good thing that we tested starting this vehicle up first because the issue is not actually that we have a immobilizer issue, it's that the screen is locked on the radio because they must have replaced just the screen and not the whole radio itself so the module just isn't actually communicating with itself so what i'm going to do is just turn this car back off then to the on position i'm going to give it a second for everything to kind of really go back and connect with each other since this radio was replaced we just need to go ahead and reprogram it it's going to connect to the server and it's going to download all the data that this radio needs to see in order to be part of this vehicle now it's asking me this index code here right so if i click it it'll give me a short description it'll say only for use with up level speaker package rpo uz8 now the other one is going to be probably the base speaker package rpo uw6 if you're asking yourself how the heck do I figure this out? This is in the build data, and the build data on these vehicles is located in one of two places. It's either gonna be underneath one of these here, which it is not, on your big trucks, that's where it's gonna be, but on a smaller vehicle, it's gonna be in the glove box on the passenger side. So I'm gonna go ahead and just open up the glove box and find 
the code. Now I can see the code is down here on the on the right hand side and I'm looking for either UZ8 or I'm looking for UW6. So UZ8 or UW6. So I'm going to U here. My first U code is UP9. So UZ8, this is the upper level radio. So I know that that's what I need to program here. So I'm gonna go to my option up top here, which is RPO UZ8, which I found over there in the glove box. And I'm gonna click next. After I click next again, it's gonna tell me all the calibrations and everything that's going on here. So this is downloaded everything. And now it's just gonna go ahead and upload and it's gonna take some time. This is why you wanna make sure that your vehicle is hooked up to a battery source so that your battery voltage does not drop down too low and you have to start all over again. All right, so now the action has been completed. The radio has been updated and you can see we have a warranty claim code right here. Take a picture of this, write it down on your ticket in your shop. If you ever have an issue, you can go back to it. Now, when you look at your radio, it no longer says locked, it's actually showing what's going on so we're on 106.1 that is how you use this tool it's super simple this whole process took us less than 30 minutes and we can charge the shop between 150 and 200 dollars so that is how we have been able to maintain profitability throughout the whole covid situation